Let's talk about oral presentations of psychological research. This might be a presentation that you do in class. It might be your thesis defense. It might be your dissertation defense. It might be a presentation that you do at a conference. If you're doing consulting, it might be a presentation that you do for your uh, client. I just want to go over some basic ideas that are guidelines. They're not all necessarily true all the time, but just some ideas so that you can make good presentations. First of all, Whenever you're presenting before others, you need to follow the instructions, the guidelines provided by the organizer. That might be your professor, that might be a supervisor. If there are guidelines and a time limit given, um, whatever those guidelines are, make sure you follow them. Because people want to listen to you, but they don't want to listen to you too much. And so if you go over the limit, you will... Um, be talking too long. So, uh, for example, uh, the time of the presentation can be really important at academic conferences. They uh, often uh, will have some referee who will hold up a sign saying, you have two minutes left. And if you don't uh, finish within two minutes, the referee will turn off the mic or they'll stand up um, and they'll just interrupt you because they want to listen to you, but they don't want to listen to you talk too much. Um, on your thesis defense or the presentation, if you go too long, your uh, advisor or your committee might say, okay, that's enough. Now we're going to ask you questions. Um, and you might not get a chance to finish and you'll be all embarrassed and flustered. So be sure to follow the, the guidelines provided. It's important to practice your presentations. Um, your presentation will be smoother if you practice it beforehand. Um, you might need to practice it two, three, four, five times. Depends on how much experience you have presenting, and how uh, at ease you feel uh, presenting. The more you practice, the more you'll feel at ease. You also need to spend a lot of effort proofreading your slides and your visuals for your presentation. Uh, they, their errors and typos are unnecessary distractions, and they make you, the presenter, seem less competent. Now, Murphy's Law says that I probably have some errors and typos on this page. I looked so hard to find them, I didn't find them. I asked my wife to look for them. She didn't find them. But something just tells me that since I'm talking about errors and typos and not looking competent, I bet you I have some errors and typos on this page. Now, when you, if you do a PowerPoint presentation, and PowerPoint works good for uh, uh, most presentations, and it works on all computers, it's just a, a good standard way of doing a presentation, use a consistent slide theme that's not distracting. You don't want to do something that has whips and chains, or you don't want to use an all-white background. You want something that's got some color, um, but, but not too much. Um, tables and figures are usually helpful unless they're too complicated or if they're inappropriate for the audience, like cutesy pictures or crude humor. Stay away from those things. Um, stay focused on the, uh, on the topic and make sure that the tables and pictures add to your argument and don't distract from it. Um, use large fonts, at least 24 point on your slides. A rule of thumb is try not to put more than seven lines of text on a slide. Don't put entire paragraphs on a, a slide. And don't read the uh, long passages off your slide. What you need to do is you need to present the material with passion and enthusiasm. You're presenting the material, which is different than people reading your material. You don't want to present it like you're reading it. You want to be there and you want to be emotionally engaging. You want to have that eye-to-eye -eye contact with people. You want to connect with people so that they can feel the same emotions that you're feeling. You want to phrase things in such a way that they'll feel the emotions that you want them to. They'll understand the importance of the question, the difficulties and the uncertainties of what we uh, already know, the questions that we have and why they are important, the, 
the, the, what you did to get your data, how it's reproducible, what it means, and why it's important. You want to use voice inflection. You want to use your, your, your entire body to convince people that what you're saying is important so that they follow along with you. Now, a problem that students often have is that they have this PowerPoint presentation. They think that the PowerPoint presentation is the focus of everything, so they go and turn the lights off. No, don't do that. You want the lights on so that people can see your facial expressions, to know how to respond to this material, to be happy when there's important results, to be disappointed when you get things that you weren't expecting. You want to you wanna keep the attention on, on you and use your, your body and your voice to, to direct and guide the uh, audience. So you want to like, uh, um, do everything you can to communicate with all of the, with, with your entire, entire body. All right, so that's an overview of some things to do to make your oral presentations better. A lot will depend on your personality and your context. So just take all of these ideas and use them in whatever way that you can to make your presentation the most effective that it can be.